Uh, gentleman yields back the balance of his time. And once again, we welcome him to the committee. I now yield myself uh, 10 minutes and I probably won't take all 10, but I, I do want to comment on a few things. First of all, let me say that uh, I think this, this hearing has been done with a great deal of thought and civility and, uh, and, and I think in, with a very positive attitude about uh, dealing with this question of the debt ceiling. So I know one person said we blamed uh, going back and forth with blame. We really didn't know a couple of, couple of times, but not, not, not like normal for sure. So uh, I appreciate all the members' contribution and the witnesses' uh, answers as well. You know, one of the things that, that occurs to me, and I know people have said uh, so many times during this hearing that it's not the rules that are broken, it's, it's the Congress that's broken. And back in 2017, uh, I was part of a joint select committee, uh, members, House and Senate, bipartisan, uh, former chairman uh, and ranking member Womack of Arkansas was, was one of the co-chairs of that group. And we met periodically for the entire year, uh, 2017. It was a joint select committee on budget and, uh, and appropriations reform. And the whole idea was trying to figure out if there were things we could do better that were, there were rules that we could change that would make the budget process more effective and so forth. And after months and months and months, I think we had seven different hearings. We had people from across the philosophical spectrum, economists and, and others. The, the conclusion that we all reached was it wasn't the rules. <laughs> it was the people and the, and the, the, the uh, willingness of the, the members of the House and Senate to responsibly deal with their uh, uh, responsibilities. And it wasn't because, you know, we talked about uh, tr uh, triggers on spending. We talked about balanced budget amendments. We talked about no pay, no budget, no pay, all of those things. And again, the conclusion on a bipartisan basis was none of those things would really change unless the members change and unless the willingness of the members to be again, to be responsible and responsive to the, the environment change. So um, I, I say that having called this hearing about the debt ceiling and proposals to change a significant rule. And the, the one thing that I, I know, I think uh, Mr. Mulvaney talked about, I love the first names, uh, but I'm gonna remain somewhat formal, uh, talked about in terms of giving up power of the purse, I think you could argue that having the debt ceiling gives up, has already taken the power of the purse away from us because it says we're going to execute our responsibilities, we're going to appropriate funds, and then we don't allow those, if we have the debt ceiling, we don't allow those decisions to be implemented uh, freely. And so, again, uh, I think this discussion has been, been very, very important. And and useful, and I'm, I'm not sure we'll have another hearing on it, but uh, I think it has prompted discussions. And, and then finally, the notion of the fact that we don't discuss the deficit and the debt uh, without talking about the debt ceiling, I think that's not true. I think we talk about the debt and the deficit all the time. Now, do we do anything about it? Not really, uh, but we, we talk about it all the time, and there's a great deal of consciousness of it. And which says to me, the, the one justification for keeping the debt ceiling, which I've heard today, is that it's an effective extortion measure to get policies enacted that otherwise wouldn't be very popular or couldn't generate enough support uh, to be passed, like sequestration. Uh, that, to me, does not, call, does not justify keeping it. It actually is a good reason, as far as I'm concerned, to get rid of it. If all it is is a wedge uh, to, either, to either get difficult policies passed or uh, to, uh, again, to force us to, uh, to force one side or the other to make concessions. So anyway, what I would like to do in the, the remaining five minutes is just to give, because I know a lot of the, uh, Dr. Blessing, her sound went out, I don't know if you're back online, but just to give you all a, a minute or two, uh, I can give each of you a minute and 15 seconds to, if you have comments about things that have been said today that you've been waiting to respond to one way or another, if there haven't, if there aren't, that's fine. 
So, Dr. Blessing, you want to take a shot? Is there anything you'd like to say in summary, things you've heard today that you'd like to make a comment on? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for a wonderful hearing, uh, and thank you for everyone uh, at the committee. Um, uh, I've, some of the, the later responses were vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, uh, giving up uh, power to the executive branch. Um, and here's the thing, while I think we should be concerned about uh, Congress as an institution and making it more powerful and congressional capacity, I don't believe that doing away with the debt ceiling or any of the reforms that have been mentioned would it, uh, mean giving up power to the executive branch. Um, because they're only lifting the debt ceiling. They're not making policy. Congress has already made all of the spending policy, all of the taxing policy that would affect the debt ceiling and overall levels of debt. So I don't see this as an abrogation of Congress's you know, fiscal responsibility or any giving, giving of any policy relevant power to the executive branch. Uh, so I just wanted to address that in particular um, in addition to all of my comments. Great. Thank you, Dr. Blessing. And by the way, if you would like to uh, uh, provide in writing your response on the historical uh, context of the debt ceiling that you, we couldn't get you in on the audio, uh, we'd love to have your, your comments in writing for the record. Happy to. Great. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Shaner. I don't have much to add. I will say I was, I, I'm glad you said that you always talk about the debt because I'm like, we all, we all always talk about the debt and the deficits. Don't know. Is it really possible that you guys never do? I thought that was unlikely. Um, so I'm glad to hear that you do. Uh, it is a big issue. I, the, the only one thing I want to say is when we talk about like, like anything that you do that lowers the debt is a good thing. Like that's not necessarily the case. The reason this is such a hard hard problem is that you really have to balance the benefits of what you're what the money that you're spending the cost of any taxes what's the best way forward what's the timing low interest rates have a lot to do with how much you room that you may have and so i just think this i this notion that well the debt ceiling forces us to make action and therefore every action is definitely good i think is something that's not exactly right which is why this conversation needs to be done not about the debt ceiling where you're under you know under the gun but really in a way where you can really address the nuances of policy. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Russell, any uh, final yeah. comments? Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today and to listen to this uh, fantastic conversation. Just want to reiterate the importance of you know, stability from the small business perspective and looking at our ecosystem and looking how small business really impacts the American economy. It's really important. I think sometimes small businesses get lost in the mix because we're always talking big economics and big business. But when you look at the impact of small businesses across the country, we are really making the most difference in the most areas and especially in our communities. And so I thank you for this opportunity for to represent small businesses and to keep them and keep us uh, top of mind. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Mulvaney, would you like the final word? John, I will, because I'll say something that hopefully is interesting, which is I yeah. think that the best thing that I'm gonna take away from this is that Sheila and I may have hit on something. Uh, and I'm willing to 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 accept your 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 premise that you guys talk about debt and deficits more than maybe I perceive now that I'm no longer inside the building. <laughs> but Sheila, Sheila talked about you know sitting down at the table. Listen, if y'all were to pass one or two or three really good fiscal reform bills without having the debt ceiling held to your head, you might convince folks like me that we don't need it anymore. Uh, again, I think we're all concerned about the same thing, which is how do we make sure the debt doesn't ruin us. Um, uh, I think we're just disagreeing on the on the best way to accomplish that. But if you all sit down and, and hack out something that say that, that reduces the deficit without having it be under the the, the sort of Damocles that the the, the, uh, the debt sling makes, then maybe you could convince me we can get rid of it after that. So uh, anyway, thanks for the chance for, to do this. It's good to see everybody, and I uh, it's one of the rare rare days I miss being in my old job. <laughs> well, I'll join you uh, in a few months, and uh, we can miss it together. Uh, <laughs> And, and hopefully get out on the, the golf course. Uh, once again, thanks to all the witnesses. Uh, it's been a very enlightening hearing. I appreciate your time and responses. And unless there is any further business before the committee, uh, this hearing is adjourned.